We have Reginald Chiedu of Fodile in our studio. Welcome to Saturday Night. Thank you so much. Reginald happens to be a lawyer, a writer, and an actor. So on the show tonight, he's going to tell us how he juggles this different, distinct <laughs> profession and make it as a professional. So, uh, Reginald, for status, you know, like what let's do on the program, can you give us a bit of a background? Yes, born and bred in our nature. My father is a lawyer, so ours is a legal family, and I followed the family line and did law. I wasn't forced to do it. Uh, I just I was interested and I did it. I was privileged to attend the old Imo State University, which later became Abia State University. And I said then, I said as a schoolboy that I'd do the law and then do drama, af- and do drama afterwards. And after being called to the bar and a stint in our nature, I went to, to England and I went to Exeter University. And at some stage, I also went to the Mime Centre in Islington. Mm. So again, with what you're telling me now, are you saying that um, while you were growing up, you had this struggle or challenge or tussle between your law, your passion for law and the passion for the arts? Mm, it wasn't a challenge. They are not so dissimilar as people think. Uh, they were just two strands of one personality. Incidentally, many lawyers through the ages have been actors and actors have been lawyers. The ultimate Shakespeare I learned from one of his biographies, had legal training and back and forth in history. So hmm. th- the two have been merging for centuries and I suppose will merge as long as people seek careers. So you will say they were, they're both um, complementary? I suppose so. Mm. Okay, so which one is your favorite? Which one is the, where the passion really lies, where you can eat, sleep and drink on? Acting. Acting? Yes. How come? Just how I'm, just the impulse I have, just the impulse I have. And I had a long uh, journey in the acting world emotionally. Uh, There are tugs within you, there are challenges within you. So you feel sometimes you're confronting mountains emotionally and spiritually as an actor. And still you, you stick to it, you don't give up on it. Just looking at you, you would actually strike me like one who would go all the way into law. Mm. You know, because you fit the profile of a lawyer. But as, as an actor, you have a hard time convincing somebody like me. That's you the truth. think so? I know so. You I think know I'm me. too proper to be you an actor? You are too proper, you're too all together, you're too... too Madam, now waiting you, they talk now. <laughs> eh? You think I don't fit be a uh, I beg. I go respect you, eh? Because we the respect person. But uh, me, I know be that kind of gentleman who make I talk through. Okay. Didn't that work? It did a bit, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, play. Just, just uh, give me a line as a, as a kingmaker. Uh, as an African kingmaker? Sure. Hey, my people. This country has been going down the drains for a long time. And today is the day. I am going to change everything and that man up there is going to be a messiah. Take what I am telling you. No more messing around. Hmm. And I say conductor. Hey, move now. Now move. Oh, la boss, eh? We the guy gege. Eh? You the move, oh, jar. My Yoruba accent is so slow. It's so defective, eh? God. So you need rehearsals for that one? I never <laughs> you did. To get in the group. These things, you've put me on the spot, mm-hmm. and I've done the best I can. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> but as a lawyer, do you think you have to have like any kind of rehearsals before you go into your, your stream? You have to prepare. You have to study. You're an eternal student. Either you know it or you don't know it. You, yes, you do study. You do prepare. You do have your facts. People who, who never studied law think it's just zest for argument that makes a lawyer. A lawyer who argues without knowing the background of the case, without being well-read on what he's going to say, would only disgrace himself. 
make himself an object of fun, an object of fun. And some very good lawyers haven't been argumentative. I understand. They know their facts are prepared. They give it with clarity and economy, and that's it. And they succeed. And now let's go into your writing prowess. You're also a writer. I try. You try. <laughs> Tell I us try. about it. I scribble. Tell a us lot about of it. plays, a lot of poems, uh, and long fiction novels, and short stories. Mm, it, it's a it's a huge bag. Quite a number of my works have been set in the past. My favorite historical periods. How long ago have you been writing? It's hard to say. I was scribbling as a schoolboy in my early teens. I was scribbling. Mm. I can't give a date now. So when did you become a professional writer? Let me say when I was at the Old Imo State University, studying law. Then it continued over the years and just went on and on. So could we safely say writing came naturally to you or it's another branch of your passion for mm. the drama, for the arts? Mm. It came naturally. I, I don't think I ever decided early in life that I was going to be a writer. Uh, if I did say that, I can't remember it at the moment. But when I was a schoolboy, I read a lot of stories. I read storybooks, graduated to novels, and then it just seemed natural to progress to writing my own works, and mm. I did. So how many it's books scribbled. do you have to your credit? I, I've published one novel, although I've completed four. I don't know how many plays I've written, because the, the plays were my main genre for many years. I scribbled away. So I've, so I don't, I've many plays, both full length and one act and sketches. I don't know how many. Then I've published a collection of poems, and I've many short stories. And these uh, this books, uh, this books you have published, these um, poems, plays, mm. are they? Um, do you have a particular concept for them, or they just come as they come? They come as they come. I don't see myself as a as a pamphleteer. They come as they come. Different situations, varied situations, uh, varied pe different periods uh, in in the human journey. So which one would you say is the closest to your heart? The one you can most relate with? Yes, you have um, so many, right? They're out there. But um, there must be one that um, you can closely, uh, intimately relate with. Which would that be? I can't at the moment name one, but that's not saying that they all, that they all mean the same thing to me as some writers would say they have favorites. I think I have some favorites, not one favorite. Tell us about it. One of my plays is set in the 1890s, and it's about a man who leaves England and goes to some unnamed African country and the adventures he has there. And you had the, the language of the late Victorians which I studied, which I like writing. And I have a favorite scene when he, he's on board ship and some man was trying to have a conversation. You know, being familiar, you know, there's this line between cordiality and familiarity, uh, which people uh, don't like crossed. And he said to this man, I'm not aware that I was on terms of bawdy banter with you. I'm not aware that I was on terms of bawdy banter with you. And it's like centuries and centuries of unbroken ascendancy lay behind that short sentence. Hmm. Uh, Interesting. I enjoyed writing it. So who would you say is your favorite writer world over now? Living writers. Could be dead, could be living. Well, the one that comes to mind is R. W. S. The Western world had W. S. centuries ago, whom we all esteem, Wale Shoyinka. And then in the last century, Africa produced 
it's on WS. Sorry, sorry. The Western world had William Shakespeare. I'm giving the Western up, world yeah. Ashik. <laughs> so had William Shakespeare, obviously, the Bard of Avon. And then in the last century, Africa produced its own WS, who is also globally acclaimed, obviously, Professor Shoyinka. And when it comes to something that I appreciate enormously, love of words, which is not verbosity, but fascination and facility with language. I think many would say he's unequaled, he's peerless. Which line or paragraph, which of his write-up? I think of Death and the King's Horseman. It's a banquet of a play, one of the plays. Read out one of his works that is your favorite. I've mentioned the play Death and the King's Horseman. Now I think of Ake, The Years of Childhood. The con- I don't know if you've read that. There's this confrontation between Mrs. Kuti and a colonial officer where the man says, Mrs. Mrs. Kuti, I think, was leading a group of women, clamoring women, some would say, and the colonial officer says, ask your women to shut up. And Mrs. Kuti asked him, excuse me, are you addressing me? And he had the nerve to repeat, yes, ask your women to shut up. And Mrs. Kuti said, you may have been born, you were not bred. Hmm. So Shoyinka re- rendered it with such clarity and so succinct, so it has such an impact. You may have been born, you were not bred. And on occasion, if I met somebody whom I found unbearably rude, those lines of Mrs. Kutis, obviously Mrs. Kutis spoke those lines, but we wouldn't have known about them if it hadn't been for Professor Shoy, get the account of it. So if I meet an unbearably rude person, I think, you may have been born, but my dear, you were not bred. Hmm, that's a very strong one. Mm. Very strong, and it drives home. Drives it, it drives home. home. Yeah. Impactful. Yeah, mm. very impactful. Uh, so if I want to put you on a spot now, so okay, do one lecturing for us. Just do something. Express yourself in your own language. Lecturing, did you say? No, just expressing Express yourself myself. in your own language. Well, way. whatever I say now, I shouldn't be blamed for. Because, because we're putting you on the spot. Because the lady has given me permission. Something that concerns me, I don't know if she knows, or something that fascinates me, or something I'd like to expound, is this love of words. It's not verbosity, It's, as I define it, fascination and facility with language. It's about writing that's not merely functional, writing that's not pedestrian. I hope I'm understood. Love of words. And I'll I'll expound love of words briefly, if I may, with reference to movement, laughter, and color. Movement, that basic human movement, walk. A writer without love of words would say continually he walked to the door. If your work manifests love of words, you tell us he stalked or he shuffled. He might have minced. He could have crept to the door, maybe striding to the door, halting, trotting, but he couldn't continually walk. Nobody merely walks. And you could tell us she laughed. That's not enough if it comes on every other page. Did she guffaw that roaring, hearty laugh? Did she chuckle? Hers might have been a mischief-laden snigger or a girlish giggle or a chortle, but not merely laughing. I think you should add um, teaching to your resume as well. I have lectured, lectured at London University, but I I didn't make it a lifetime's career. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, now, so, uh, Reginald, um, you talked about... Let's let's, let's all all understand this. Um, Did you practice at all as a lawyer? You practice as a lawyer. I still do. Uh, You still do? uh, You still practice? uh, Yes. What uh, what, um, field? General litigation. General That's what we litigation. Do. Mm. Okay, what so we from, from there you gravitated into writing? 
You're still right, yeah. and now acting, and you yeah. have um, that's that's that seems to be your last bus stop right now, right? Or is there something <laughs> else you want to do? In my future? last KK bus, my last KK bus, baby. If you like it, or Kara bus stop. <laughs> <laughs> as long as it's something that yes, moves yes. Uh, and of course it shouldn't just move does it glide does it speed does it whiz along the road <laughs> it must show uh, love of mm-hmm. words <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness so where, where would that be where after you know you have just the, the steps are there law writing, writing. and drama acting is there anything you want, want to add to it? Okay, you said you had a stint with teaching, which um, we don't know if you still want to continue with that. Do you still have anything else you want uh, to achieve in the course of your life? Yes. Like what? Make more cakes. More and cakes. And try not to eat them, yes, and cook and entertain. Hmm. Mm, give perfect dinner parties or hmm. tea parties, like the colonialists I write about. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> wow, you have, you're an place. interesting personality. Uh, we keep our a voices. bit of everything. A bit of everything. I suppose one could say that. A bit of a cocktail. Hmm. But I want to ask this question. Yes, we have quite a number of um, writers here, quite a number of actors here that would just come to mind. You seem to have your art out there mm. in diaspora, then here in Nigeria. How come? I studied my drama over there, and I lived there for a long time. So I went to my auditions there and did what I did over there. How do you intend to contribute to that Pan-African agenda? I'm open to possibilities, carrying all I am or all I could be, both negative and positive, in daily existence and encountering people. I'm open to possibilities, but I don't. I see myself as an artist. I believe in art for art's sake. Now, let me ask you this question: Would you? Can we? Can you? Can we safely say? Can we safely say, your writing, your act, and your craft is mostly influenced by the Western um, setting? Maybe. Maybe. Have you consciously thought about it, reflected on it? Mm, may, maybe, it's true, but maybe. But I've written a lot about the African past as well and the African present. But I don't, um, I wouldn't sort of make a firm statement about it because, as I said, I've just gone with my feelings. I've gone could as, that maybe be the reason? Is. Could that be the reason why you're probably not as popular here than mm. you are over there given the fact that um, you have been celebrated by the BBC and some other network mm. and organs you know mm. of repute and you don't have you don't have that kind of recognition <laughs> they've here. celebrated um, quite a number of people um, can I say something go ahead I think if you give my work in your hallowed and honourable position in the NTA if you give my work a certain exposure highlighted, promoted then I'd be appreciated here I'd reach out to more of my people and I suppose we'd all learn from one another and grow through knowing what the other person does Okay Um, Are you back here to stay? I'm nowhere to stay. Uh, Not even life is permanent. No, I can't say I'm anywhere forever. Uh, As I said, not even life is permanent. I could have reason to be in Australia next week, and if I can get the papers and the funds to go, and I think it would be a prudent or worthwhile thing to do, I would go there. If I had to live in Alaska, I don't hope to, I think it's very cold, but it could happen that I'd have to be there, I'd have to be in Delhi, or or I'd have to be in some little village somewhere. So nowhere, I'm, I'm nowhere, I don't know, no residence is permanent. So when countries give permanent residence to people, life itself is not permanent. Okay, now <laughs> I want to take you up on that. Um, now you're an actor. 
Mm. You're known over there. Any plans to delve into the uh, Nigerian movie industry? It, it fascinates me. There's a lot of vigor here and a lot of activity here. And I expect for somebody who's more or less a newcomer, there'd be challenges, there might be obstacles, but I'd love to do more, do acting work here. I'd love, and writing as well. You think you'll blend with the trend of today? Of course I would. I, I because you strike people. me like one who would nicely, creatively depict things of the epic. Mm -mm. Tell me about it. No. Correct me if I'm wrong. Um, it, it wouldn't be courteous, galon, as the French would say, to, to tell a lady she's wrong. The French people taught us you mustn't doubt a lady's word. So I can't say you are wrong. But things could work out differently. There might be surprises for you and for me. Well, it's a pleasure having Thank you on Saturday you so night. Thank you so very it's a pleasure much. Pleasure having you on Thank Saturday you. night. Yes. Yeah, so, um, viewers, on that note, we we'll say thank you so much for joining us on this week's edition of Saturday Night. Until next week, it's been Saturday Night.